close to your life cycle is usually the first thing that comes to mind when we talk about managing multiple clusters. I'm Louis, and in this video, we'll look at all the amazing features that ACM has to offer for the OpenShift and Kubernetes cluster life cycle, including creating, upgrading, destroying, and even auto-scaling fleets of clusters as these functions really help support initiatives such as multi-tenancy and edge computing. But before we dive into some examples, let's surface the architecture a little bit to understand some foundational concepts. ACM works in a hub-spoke model. The hub is an OpenShift cluster where we install ACM, and it is also the cluster that manages the life cycle of the spoke clusters. A spoke cluster, also called managed cluster, is a cluster that is connected and reports back to the ACM hub. It is also where some of the ACM functionality run, in the form of integrations and add-ons. As you can see, managed clusters can run on a wide variety of underlying infrastructures. For the most updated information on supported platforms, check our page at the Red Hat customer portal to find our latest support matrix containing all the information. Here's another illustration where we have the managed cluster and its add-ons managed by the ACM agent, the cluster lens, which reports back to the ACM hub. Operations can be done using the API, command line, or the console. On this demonstration, we'll use the console and focus on the cluster life cycle piece. It is a fundamental piece of ACM, which includes an arsenal of cutting edge open source technologies backed by the multi-cluster engine operator, such as Hive, Hypershift, and other CNCF projects, such as Open Cluster Management and Copy. The usage of these tools will depend on the platform of choice. All right, so back in the console, the platform of choice for our first example is bare metal. Let's jump right in and deploy a cluster using the host inventory option. With host inventory, we can manage a pool of bare metal servers that can be used to create on-premises clusters on demand. These clusters can be standalone with dedicated machines for the control plane or hosted control planes, where the control plane runs as pods on the hub cluster. This flow right here is a very similar creation flow that you see in the Red Hat Hybrid Cloud console at console.redhat.com. You put in some details, select some parameters, and then you add hosts to form your cluster. The difference here back in ACM is that you can even install these clusters by using GitOps with the help of ACM Zero Touch provisioning. So right now we'll continue with the standalone option and existing hosts. Okay, I'll select my credential for those hosts. I'll give this cluster a name and I'll check the single node OpenShift option. Now I'll go with next. Everything else remains as default. And then I'll save this and finally add hosts. We can see that we have one node available from the Seattle location in our host inventory. And that's exactly what we need for the single node OpenShift. So we'll choose it. We can see that some validations are happening and ACM is also preparing the node for the installation. A lot of the configuration details are already pre-populated because we had those informations in the credential that we set up before. And that's all we needed. We can see that everything looks good, ready, so we'll let ACM progress with the installation. And here it is. After around 25 minutes, 
the installation is completed. I can take a look at some information. For example, I can download the kubeconfig for this cluster. I can look at the installation logs in case of any issues. And I can also see a lot of other details and configurations from the host and from the cluster. And we can even go further. In case there is no more capacity in the single node OpenShift, we can use the same flow to add new hosts to this existing cluster. Or perhaps we don't even need this cluster anymore. So we can go ahead and destroy it. And what is awesome about this is that the host will become available again in the host inventory automatically. All right, so I guess we can see another use case now creating a cluster in the public cloud. The flow is essentially the same. You get to create cluster. You choose your preferred public cloud provider. I'll go with the AWS and standalone option. You can notice that this wizard is very similar to the other one we used before for the bare metal installation. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and pick a cluster name. I'll select the version and I'll hit next. I'll select the region and the architecture. And of course, every provider will have its own things like Amazon AMIs, but the process should be pretty straightforward. Once we fill everything in correctly, we'll just hit next and create cluster. In addition to all the features available for cluster lifecycle management, ACM has some other advanced functionality like the cluster sets. A cluster set is essentially just a group of managed clusters. This can help you manage access to these clusters as you can assign RBAC roles to each cluster set. Also, I want to show you cluster pools. Cluster pools allows users to maintain a pool of pre-created hibernated clusters, ready to be cleaned and turned on when needed. In the case of existing clusters that were not created by ACM, of course you can still connect and manage these clusters, even on disconnected environments, from the same hub. We call this the import process, and there is quite some flexibility on how this can be achieved. First, if you have a Red Hat account, and you install the cluster with that same account, you can set up some discovery settings in ACM. And your previously created clusters will show up in this dashboard, ready to be imported. If that's not the case, we can go ahead and click on the import cluster button. This wizard gives us a very intuitive way to import a cluster either running some kubectl commands or providing some data like the API token in server URL or the kubeconfig of the cluster to be imported. For example, I, I'll use a AKS environment on Azure. I'll call this AKS-Central and I'll pick the run import commands manually option. ACM generates the command to me. I'll copy. I'll now make sure my AKS environment is running. So I'll run some Azure commands. Yes, I have my environment up and running. Now I'll go ahead and make sure that my terminal has access to these same environments. Yes. So what I'll do now, I'll go ahead and run these commands. It's a pretty long command. And I can see all the agents and tooling are being generated in AKS. 
very quickly. I can go back to ACM and look at my new AKS environment. Show up in the ACM dashboards. Gradually, we'll see all the information showing up in this dashboard as well. For example, the nodes and the add-ons that are being installed. This process can also be done in a few different ways. We have just seen how to do it in the console. But given that sometimes we might not have access to the console, this process can be initiated directly in the managed cluster with the manual installation of the cluster lab. Secondly, we can work with something called auto import secret, which is perfect for GitOps implementations, where you can add new hosts by just applying a secret to the hub cluster. And that's a wrap. Here are the things that we saw in today's video. We hope you enjoyed it.